Is harder better? I guess it depends on whose stepmom you ask. But myself, I want to know. So on today's video, I'm going to take the same lick and make it increasingly more harder so we can see if it gets more better. Or not. kids, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. I've wanted to do a video like this for a while because there seems to be a mindset among guitar players that upping the difficulty makes something suddenly cooler or more musical or more interesting or whatever, and I'm just not really that sure about that. So I wrote this A Lydian kind of shred lick for us to practice with a couple of different approaches so we can get down to the bottom of it. Now of course this is all completely subjective. What I think sounds cool, you might think sounds totally whack. And what I find difficult, you might find very easy to do. But either way, this can just be a great creative exercise to see how you can change your phrasing and stuff and change your techniques to get different sounds out of your same old licks. As always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Guitars. People are saying it's the coolest place on the entire internet. I'm just repeating what I've heard. You go and check it out yourself and see what you think. Sign up today even for just a buck a month. It's going to get you access to a ton of downloadable tabs, backing tracks, bonus lessons, and so much more. This week, everybody who supports the channel over there is going to get downloadable practice tracks to go along with this shred lick, as well as tabs and all that other good stuff. So don't delay. Sign up today. Gear-wise, for today's video, I'm playing my lovely Ibanez RGT3120. I love this guitar. And I'm playing that into the Bad Cat, Hot Cat, Apple Fryer over here, which is a really rad amp. These new high-gain Bad Cats are seriously sick. I'm playing that into the Universal Audio Ox Box. <laughs> Okay, so there's the first approach that we're going to talk about, which is to play this lick with legato, the least amount of right hand involvement that we can have. Now this is a lot of players' first intro to shredding, is the discovery of hammer-ons and pull-offs. I know it was for me, because I'm a huge Joe Satriani guy, I always have been. So this is definitely somewhere that you've heard this sound before. I want to point out as we go along, dudes who use these sounds, the advantages and disadvantages of these approaches and all that jazz. So with this approach, what we're going to do is to simply pick the first note of every one of these triplets that we're playing. <laughs> Pretty simple. Left hand's doing all the heavy lifting there. Now I see a lot of youngsters these days skipping the legato thing and just going straight on to alternate picking, and that's cool. But I still think there's a lot of value in starting here when you're getting into shredding. Because whenever you're playing this and you're playing these fast triplets, it's gonna really get your left hand in sync and in rhythm. So whenever you practice this stuff with the metronome or with the practice tracks that are on my Patreon page, which of course are way more better, you want those, you're going to be really getting that left hand in sync with the rhythm of the song, which is great because when we start picking fast and trying to really synchronize the two hands together, if this hand already has good groove, all you're going to have to worry about is this guy. So this is a really great place to start your shred journey. As you do this, what I want you to make sure that you're doing is keeping the rhythm nice and smooth. Trip -bala, trip -bala, trip -bala, trip -bala, and not going like this. You know, really kind of blurting out the notes like that as fast as your fingers can go down. We want this to sound seamless and smooth and really rhythmic. Again, we're putting this hand as the groove holder. Plus you can add on like a little bit of palm muting like I just did right there for that maximum Nuno appeal if you want this to sound a little more aggressive. That's one of the cool things about this legato style. It tends to sound really smooth and really fluid, which can be cool, especially in those you know kind of fusion contexts and stuff. That's also the disadvantage because sometimes you might want something a little more rhythmic and a little bit more aggressive sounding that has more pick strokes in it. And that's where we're gonna head to next. Up 
next on the difficulty train, we're gonna talk about the half-picked approach to shredding, which is my personal favorite sound. This is the sound that you've heard from players like Eddie Van Halen, Paul Gilbert, and a whole bunch of others. <laughs> love that sound. It sounds like a, like a whip cracking or something, you know? So with this approach, here's what we're doing. We're doing a mix of hammer-ons and some alternate picking as we go throughout this. Like this right here. Play the first triplet with just one pick stroke, a downstroke. Check out that leg meat. So do just one downstroke. And then on the next string, we're going to play up, down, up, and then one more downstroke to start that hammer-on chain again. So it's like pick, and so on. And it's always down, up, 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 down, loved that sound because of the dynamics of it. One of the things that I love about this too is it gets you into some speed burst work. I swear guys, working on bursts of speed with the pick is the way to get fast. It's not about doing the marathon, it's about doing the sprints, for real. And whenever we're doing this at relatively high speeds, That's exactly what your pick is doing. There's like little rest periods in there and then little bursts of speed. Just like my honeymoon. This is a really great way to start speeding up your playing fast. I swear to you, you will get faster and cleaner if you practice this way than just going full tilt on speed. Now, the disadvantages of this style are honestly the same thing as the strengths. It's dynamic. Some notes are louder, some notes are quieter, and sometimes you don't want that. I'll also say this works best with like high gain, you know, just to kind of compress and even out your playing. I don't think this is gonna sound that great on like, you know, Peepaw's Martin D28 or whatever. I don't think that's really the style you're looking for on that. So again, a little give and take. Now let's head over to the Super Saiyan Black Belt Ultimate Shred God mode of pure alternate picking. The most challenging, in my opinion. sassy sound of pure alternate picking down up repeat that's the cheat code this is the kind of sound that you've heard from players like Aldi Miola John Petrucci my buddy Andy Wood I will say this is not common again like even like Paul Gilbert the guy we all idolize as the alternate picking guy doesn't alternate pick everything he does that half legato approach like I do a lot of the time but man alive does it ever come with some benefits the extreme consistency you can get the machine gun like sound where every note has this aggression behind it is just amazing at certain times as always i recommend checking out troy grady's amazing cracking the code series if you want to level up your alternate picking game it's amazing stuff be sure to check his channel out and tell him uncle ben sent you but the idea here couldn't really be much easier down up that's it down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and so on. It's really challenging to keep those hands in sync. That's the hardest part about all this, is making sure that for every note this hand is playing, this hand is responding with one perfectly timed pick stroke right on top of it. That's why I really stress working on the legato thing early on and making sure your left hand has good groove to it. Because if this hand is feeding this hand garbage, it doesn't matter how good your picking is, it's never gonna turn out sounding clean. This is why some players have that sound where it like, you know, it sounds like they just set their right arm on like frappe and the left hand is just a jumble of patterns. You know, that kind of thing. 
that's where that's coming from is because the hands aren't really in sync and agreeing with how many notes are actually being played. But man, it's really worth getting into because that sound that you get with pure alternate picking, it's like a machine gun, you know? And you can't really get that any other way. One of the most frequent questions I get is like, why not do economy picking instead? Because for example, with that lick right there, you could go down, up, down, down, but it's not the same. It doesn't have the same groove to it. It's why players that economy pick a lot, like let's say Tosin and Abasi, always sound different than players that alternate pick a lot, like John Petrucci. But when it comes to that extreme groove, alternate picking is the only way. I've never heard any player ever that can economy pick with the same sense of groove as a pure alternate picker like Al Miola. Uh, of course, there are guys out there that are freaks like Frank Gambale, totally aware of those guys. They're incredible and amazing and really know how to work with economy picking. But I think for, you know, 99% of us that are humans, unlike Frank, I think this is kind of the only way to get that super fast, super groovy sound is pure alternate picking. Now, when it comes to getting this lick down with the really high speed alternate picking, one thing that I recommend doing is working on it in little sections. Again, speed burst rather than the whole thing. Try to work through it in sections. And what I try to pay really close attention to is the starting pick stroke and the ending pick stroke. So for example, let's take the first octave of the lick. It should be starting on a downstroke. And if we've been alternate picking it diligently, it should be ending on an upstroke. Down, up. If you end on a downstroke, something has gone wrong. You have slipped some, maybe some economy picking in. Down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, like that. That's really common to see with players that are getting into this stuff. Or maybe you slipped in some uh, legato, a hammer on or two in there, and your picking has flipped itself around. So whenever I practice this stuff, I try to pay really close attention to making sure that I, I can play that last note and just freeze frame and analyze what pick stroke did I just do? Is my hand going like this or is my hand going like this? And that'll help me determine if I'm getting the picking down right. Because at high speeds, it can be really hard to tell sometimes if you just did a down or an up. You're just in motion, you know? Again, ending on that upstroke every single time. It can really help you kind of focus and make sure that you're keeping your picking on track and everything's going the way that you think it is. Now that being said, that is also kind of alternate picking's downfall. It doesn't really have the dynamics of that half legato thing, you know? If I play the half thing versus alternate picked, you know, they're both really cool, but I kind of like the sound of that whipping dynamic that you get with the half pick thing. Some players might not like that. Some players might like just to have the sound of it being totally even. And there's even some players out there that might find that easier. Rather than going back and forth between hammer-ons and picking and hammer-ons and picking, some players actually might find it easier just to go on autopilot and just say, well, for every note I play, there's going to be a pick stroke attached to it. Some players do better that way, you know? But this is where this stuff becomes entirely in the eye of the beholder, you know? What I think is easy, you might not. What I think sounds cool, you might not think sounds cool at all. It's up to you as a player to learn all these different approaches, legato, half, full pit, and figure out which one you think sounds the best. There is no right answer. And again, a lot of times this stuff entirely depends on context. Would I want to hear Satriani's beautiful, always with me, always with you solo, with every note having a really aggressive chirpy pick attack in front of it? Not just no, hell no, I wouldn't want to hear that. At the same time, would I want to hear, you know, some of Al Di Miola's like, Friday night in San Francisco stuff played with a smooth legato style? Not really. Time and place. And it's up to you to decide on which one is best. So I say learn them all and let your ears sort them out. Just because it's harder doesn't necessarily mean that it's better. So there you go guys, the same hot lick in three increasing levels of difficulty. Let me know in the comments section which one you think sounded the most coolest. Make mine half pick. I'm just hooked on that sound. Always have been. I blame Eddie, you know? Well, I thank Eddie. Let's be honest about that. 
Hopefully this gives you guys some cool inspiration to try out some different phrasing with your technique to achieve sounds that you've never added into your playing before. You're going to get the most out of this video if you sign up today to my Patreon page over at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Grab those practice tracks that I made to go along with this and the tabs. That's how you're going to get the most out of it. So don't delay. Sign up today. Also be sure to ring the bell and subscribe to the channel and all that other cool stuff that YouTubers ask you to do. We ask you to do that because that helps us out a lot. So please be sure to do that stuff. Ring that bell for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold right here on my channel. Well guys, it's been fun as always, but myself, I think I'm going to go work on my technical phrasing a little bit. And I recommend you guys get away from the computer and do the same. Let's click it. More picking.